Hello everyone and welcome back to another video with On Point Politics, your number one stop for all things polling and election analysis in the United States. And today we're going to be looking at the latest poll from Atlas Intel, which is not only the most accurate pollster from 2020, but also the most accurate pollster for the 2022 midterms, barely getting the national popular vote off, literally less than a point off in the popular vote in 2022. And not only that, they're also an international pollster who got the elections in France, Argentina, Brazil, and many other races in other countries basically spot on. And so make sure to hit the like button and to subscribe if you want more content just like this. And so looking at this, Donald Trump is at 50.9% to Harris is 47.3%. Jill Stein's getting about 0.4%. Cornel West getting about 0.2%. Chase Oliver just down at 0.1%. Now, if you notice, this is a likely voter sample of about 1,700 you know, U.S. voters. And what's very interesting is that when you look at my polling average on onpointpolitics.com, where we currently have Donald Trump at 317 and Harris is 221, we actually added the poll into our average today. And it moved it very slightly to the right. We have adjusted the electorate projection that we have a little bit to the right just because of the fact that the Alice Intel poll was pretty accurate back in 2020 and 2022. And they were weighing for certain demographics more correctly than others. And looking at this now, it is just an impressive victory for Donald Trump. You're talking about a 3.6 percentage point win. And funny enough, when you add this poll into the average, since it was more accurate than most national pollsters back in the 2020 election, you look at it, it also has Donald Trump up considerably, and it matches up with the electorate, which we now have at R plus one. We see that Donald Trump in our average now is leading by 3.5%. So this poll is basically in line with our polling average. It basically aligns spot on with our polling average. Undecideds did go down. This poll does have a considerably low amount of undecideds. And Weston Stein did go up in this poll in our average. Kennedy is almost down at zero, but it seems like Donald Trump has benefited from you know, basically being the candidate that RFK endorsed. You're talking about going from 47% to 49% in just a small amount of time. I mean, that's fairly impressive. You have about 3.2% undecided voters, so that's fairly interesting. Probably about half a point when here. Harris went down just slightly in the average today. Nothing crazy, but Donald Trump's lead because of that poll has expanded to 3.5 points in our average, which is very close to what they have and our numbers are somewhat similar to what they have i mean it's kind of matching up relatively well and when we look at the map i mean donald trump is winning massively but not only did i look at my own map and kind of show what's going on here i also modeled out my own results for the atlas intel poll for right now as we can see here they wait for about an r plus one electorate it is a majority female electorate we see that 18 to 29 year olds, 17 percent of the electorate, 30 to 44, 26 percent, 45 to 64, 36, 65 plus 22 percent. We have the white electorate at about 69 percent, blacks at around 12, Hispanic at 12, Asian at three, and other at five. So again, somewhat of a decent race sample as well. And looking at this, Biden's approval rating is at 37 percent, 38 percent. Which is very interesting because when we actually look at the approval ratings of other people, what's fairly interesting is that now we see Barack Obama again still positive plus 15 approval rating. Donald Trump at 46% favorability. Harris at 48. So despite her having a higher approval rating, she's actually losing in the popular vote here, mainly because Donald Trump is going to win a lot of people who disapprove of him. You could disapprove of somebody and still approve of the job that they're doing. And it seems to be that's what's going to be the case. I mean, that's kind of what it's looking like here. Donald Trump, 46% to Joe Biden's 39%. That race effectively has not changed. And you see Vance and Walls are relatively where they're at in the mid 30s in approval rating so all these polls that show walls with a positive approval rating don't listen to them it doesn't make any sense 
Hillary Clinton at 30. Gavin Newsom at 24% nationally. That's pretty bad. I mean, there's a lot of people who don't know him, but the fact that there's not a lot of people that know him and he's already at 30, 47% disapproval nationwide, that's pretty abysmal. And looking at these numbers here, you know, Donald Trump in a head to head is winning 50.9 to Harris's 48. And you can see with the candidates that are third party, they do eat into Harris's margin. Not really any of them affect Donald Trump. It only hurts Harris. And you can see they're getting vote shares that are fairly similar to what I have. And when we look at these demographic cross tabs, I basically got all of them and I modeled it out to get an electoral college map. And this is the map you get. When you apply all those cross tabs and you average them out, you get Donald Trump at 323 electoral college votes to Harris's 215 electoral colleges votes with Virginia and New Hampshire basically competitive. And New Hampshire and uh, Jeremiah Watson's, you know, Wade polling average is plus 0 0.23 for Harris. And our polling average has it tilt Trump. We currently have Trump winning the state by a little bit over a point in our model. We don't even have Minnesota going red. I mean, it's close. I mean, it is competitive, but we don't quite have it going to, you know, Donald Trump right now. It is competitive, though. And New Hampshire, you know, what's very interesting about this, you know, about New Hampshire and Maine, like I was about to say, is that he is winning independence by basically four points in this poll, which is very impressive. And not only that. He is winning 7% of Democrats. Harris only getting 6% of Republicans. So that, again, very interesting stuff. He's only She's only winning Asians by three nationally. She's winning the African-American vote by about 48 points. Hispanic, she's up by 12. Whites, Trump's up by a comfortable 16, 17 points. I mean, around there. And he's winning the other group by about four. Looking at college degree or higher she's only winning that group by about nine even eight points non-college basically a 16 point win for donald trump 15 point victory he's very competitive with 18 to 29 year olds only losing that group by four he's killing with 30 to 44 year olds basically flipping that whole group he's tying with 65 plus and is sort of competitive with 45 to 64 so those older groups are under improvements under under performances but he's massively overperforming with the younger voters which is interesting he's only losing women by five he is basically competitive with men i mean he's killing her with men he's up by like 15 14 points with men and even with the people who basically are other slash prefer to not identify which may be people that really are just in the lgbtq community or to that extent she's only winning that group by two points she's only up by two i mean that's kind of insane he's winning about 96 percent of his 2020 vote harris is only getting 88 percent of that and other don't remember or didn't vote he's winning that group by 14 points he's winning people who either forgot don't remember or didn't vote by 14 points that is actually insane and looking at this between Donald Trump and Kamala Harris, which candidate do you reject more? Harris wins this question by three points, which is absolutely insane. Look at this. Did you watch the ABC News debate between Kamala Harris and Donald Trump? And we see that right now, I mean, Harris won the debate, but you have a lot of people that are in that neither column that are breaking for Donald Trump by a considerable amount. I mean, it's just there. It really is. If you see it here, look, people who vote neither slash not sure are heavily a part of Donald Trump's coalition. Pretty much about there. People who said that, you know, Donald Trump's getting some people that said Kamala Harris won, which again is very interesting. I mean, it's just, and even people like, look, people who said that Kamala Harris won the debate, Donald Trump is getting 5% of those voters. Like, it's it's kind of like a football game where somebody wins and it's like, oh, okay, yeah, they did fine, but that's not my favorite team. It's sort of the same thing that's showing through. You could even see Hispanics thought Trump won the debate quite massively. African American, 34% thought that, you know, Donald Trump won. Asians are tied. 
it's actually the white voters that are controlling the sample. A lot of white voters are kind of certain Harris ones. Some of them are neither. But you see even some of these minority groups, they thought Donald Trump did better in the debate by quite a big amount, even compared to how they're voting, which is crazy when you think about that. Even between women, it's relatively competitive. And looking at the issues, I mean, Donald Trump's up on education by three points. Harris is only up on reproductive rights by two. So even abortion is not even her best crutch. Reducing poverty and equality, Trump's up six points. Looking at healthcare, Trump's up by five points on healthcare. Combating corruption, Trump's up nine. Appoint justice to Supreme Court, Trump up seven. You war in Ukraine, Trump plus 12. Economy, Trump plus 14. Reducing inflation, Trump plus 14. China, U.S. competition, Trump plus 15. National debt, Trump plus 14. And immigration, look, is his best issue, including Israel and Hamas. It's his second best issue. She's only winning on two issues, which is environment protection and not even by a lot. She should be up on this question by a lot more. And when we see here, people who are planning to vote by mail are only 20% of the electorate. So it's way less than last time. A lot less room for shenanigans to occur. That's for sure. And looking at this, the greatest challenge that the U.S. faces today is inflation and the cost of living. It's, it's just it's just it's there look fbi trust in fbi down 16 points u.s supreme court 27 cia 23 secret service down 16 u.s Krong is 40 percent i mean that is ridiculous look at this building the wall on the border with mexico trump a plus 27 favorability trade barriers to protect u.s manufacturing plus 46 legal marijuana plus 27 Reinstatement of Roe v. Wade is only D plus is only is only plus ten. Tykes hacks on high income earners plus twenty seven. Immunity from criminal prosecution for Donald Trump is only negative seven. I mean, I would have thought that would have been a bigger negative, but it's not. Uh, and you look at this, you see U.S. financial support for Israel is plus eight only, with a bunch of don't knows. Of uh, rescinding Obamacare, that's in the negative. A military funding for Ukraine only plus two. Citizen pathway from undocumented immigrants negative fourteen. So Donald Trump is running on the issues. I mean, it just is. It, it it's running on the issues. Look at this fairness of Donald Trump of uh, being persecuted. A, a slight plurality think it's a political persecution. I mean, it, it's not looking good. I mean, the opinion has shrunk on that, but it's been. You know that it's per political persecution the entire time. Should Donald Trump be disqualified from the January 6th Capitol invasion? I mean, he's winning that question by four in terms of no. And that's the popular vote margin that this poll produced. So again, you know, all the issues seem to be favoring him right now. It's just what it is. It, it seems to be favoring him. Look at the job market. People who feel about it, what do you evaluate your economics family situation down 25 points, family situation 20, United States economy down 42 points. It's ridiculous. It is absolutely ridiculous. And you see a lot of people think it will get better, but it may be because Donald Trump's up in this poll. And they think, but because of voting Donald Trump that it's going to get better. And we see here... You know, overall, Donald Trump is doing extremely well. Look at this. One of the select pollsters ordered a diamond from the New York Times. And they had Trump plus five a few months ago in July, and which kind of matched what I had. I mean, I had Trump plus seven. They had Trump plus five. So again, it's like, you know, and again, an A rating from 538 before they became biased. Looking at this, I mean, they were the most accurate Poll, look at that, analyst intel right there. Only a miss of 2.01% in the 2020 averages. When you average out everybody's polling, they're at the top of the list right there. And their final poll was Biden plus 4.7. And funny enough, look at this, was the most accurate pollster of the 2022 presidential election in Brazil, the most accurate pollster of Chile, the most accurate pollster of the three cycles in Argentina and was the most accurate in the 2022 presidential race in Colombia in the first round of voting and the runoff and 
was the only a- a- accurate pollster to predict the legislative deadlock from Spain. So it's like every way you look at it, they're absolutely the most accurate pollster you can find out there. It's not even close. Not only are they good in the U.S., they're good in multiple areas. I mean, they're good in multiple areas. It's absolutely crazy how accurate a lot of these pollster, uh, how accurate this pollster is across the board in multiple nations. It's absolutely insane to see that Donald Trump in the most accurate national poll is killing it. And even when you look at the 2020 poll for this, when you look at the 2020 poll, Biden was leading by 4.7 and their vote shares were relatively accurate. I mean, you look at Biden plus 51.3. I mean, they had him at 50.9. Trump at 46.9. They had him at 46.2, like literally spot on. Basically, the uh, closest you could have gotten. The closest you could have gotten. Literally, the closest you could have gotten. It is absolutely insane how this was the case. Absolutely crazy that they were able. Look at this. Even best performance in the 2019 Argentinian presidential elections. They were the most accurate. Pretty much the most accurate. Looking at this in 2020. Alice Intel polls for U.S. Democrat primaries had the smallest mean error across all pollsters. Across all pollsters, they were the most accurate in the 2020 primaries as well. I mean, this is what these quote-unquote high-quality pollsters, this is the high-quality poll. I mean, they're just killing it. And if you get the crosstabs and do the same thing by applying all the crosstabs to 2020, this is the map you could have gotten. So if you would have used this poll to predict the 2020 election, you literally would have gotten... 49 out of 50 states correct. Joe Biden ended up going on to win 306 electoral college votes. But overall, if we would have used this, it would have been pretty spot on. And this is going to be our demographic model going into this election. If we get it wrong, we get it wrong. But right now, I mean, we were able to predict 2020 using our model. You know, it just that it is what it is. We were able to do it. And so now, looking at this, it's like, it, it really, even comparing the maps, look how similar they are. This is the most accurate pollster in a, quite a long time, by the way, in multiple areas and countries and in multiple ways. This is the most accurate pollster. When you bottle out their demographic margins, it is not that different from what we have in the Electoral College at all. Some states are too Democrats. Some states are too red. You know, Colorado is probably not going to even be under five. I'd be surprised. Michigan may not be over five. You know, Virginia is a little iffy. Maybe Nebraska seconds a little too red. But overall, it is very similar to what we have, guys. And this makes me more confident that I am going to be the most accurate election forecaster in 2024, regardless if you agree with my policy or ideological positions or not. And so if you guys did enjoy this breakdown, make sure to hit the like button and to subscribe if you want more content just like this. And I will see you guys in the next video.